Good evening, everybody. You guys ready to get started? It's good to see you. Maybe small in number, but strong. Um, Brother Dave, he's going to lead us in a couple songs. Once he's done tuning up his guitar. Um, Brother Don Coleman, you want to open us up in prayer?
like when you first open up your eyes in the morning and you get that first bit of sunlight in there and how good it feels to start that new day you know can you imagine what that will be like when you first see that first heavenly sunlight when you step into heaven you know how, how nice and great that would feel um of course now we're gonna go and you know take some time to have uh, prayer requests and i mean i know most of you know already about pastor joe and marcy why they're not here so just pray for them and Uncle Jimmy doesn't know. Uh, yeah. T- tested for the virus. Marcy did, so I don't know how long. I don't know what that means or how long how long they're going to be out, but that's why they're not here tonight. Does anyone else have a prayer request? Jackie? We can pray for Jacob, my grandson. He's trying to find a job. And also my great-grandbaby. She hasn't got her braces yet. She's supposed to be getting fitted for it, but that's what I keep hearing. Mm-hmm, right. She's going to get fitted for it, but she hasn't yet. <laughs> cool. Amen. Tina? Okay, pray for my family. Nina. Also pray for Marcy and Joe and them down sick again. Mm. Pray for her. Okay. We talked to Jojo, Jojo last night, two nights ago. We talked to Jojo for a good long time, and she's doing better. She's doing good. She's up and down, like you guys said. And somebody said, up. Oh, she's on a roller coaster, but she is. But she seemed to be in good spirits, which is, to me, the most important thing. Yeah, oh, it was nice talking to her. Silas. Yeah, Joe, uh, Rick Cox says we're in the corner of Sue. We're away. We're away. We're away. We're away. We're away. Yeah. Away. His son died last night, so he's to that family. Yeah, that's, amen. Anybody else? If not, uh, Dave Horton, you want to pray over our prayer request in the remainder of the service? In our gracious name, Father, you have heard all the spoken requests, you know, all the troubles they have and all the things, and all your mercy and your grace will comfort the families, bring them a little bit of peace in their times of day. May you bless all the unspoken ones and continue to bless everybody in this church. Show your mercy to everybody. In his name, amen. 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 Jackie, you and Debbie, or you want to sing? Yeah. Come on. You don't want to sing? No. You can go sing. Go sing. I'm sorry, my friend. She said Joel was singing. Take take up thy cross and follow me. I haven't sang it in a while. You want to sing it? I walked one day along a country road, and there a stranger journeyed to bent low beneath the burden of his load it was a cross a cross i knew take up thy cross and follow me i hear my blessed savior call how can i make a lesser sacrifice when jesus gave is all. I cried, Lord Jesus, and he called my name. I saw his hands all bruised and torn. I stooped to kiss away the marks of shame, the shame for me that he bore. Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice? 
Lord, I cry, and lo, a cross for me appeared. The one forgotten I had cast aside, the one so long that I had feared. Take up thy cross and follow me. I Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? My cross I'll carry till the crown appears. The way I journey soon will away all tears and friend hold friendship with a friend take up thy cross and follow me I hear the blessed Savior call how can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus Oh, you know this. 
Mighty quiet out there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we have a very delicate subject to talk about tonight. 
Anybody guess what it is? <laughs> hmm? Gender identity. In case you're confused. <laughs> I hope nobody here is about that. <clears throat> Gender identity and actually homosexuality too. I think that that's a subject that's not talked about a whole lot in most churches nowadays. Oh I was even reading today about a, a well-known, pretty well-known pastor that had, had some kind of conference and he had two gay men that had was married to two other men come and speak at his conference. And I tried to make and justify it some way by the Bible, but I don't think there's no justification to that for that. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I've got a lot that wrote down here and a lot of scripture. I'm not going to read, read a lot out of the Bible, but I'm going to give you a lot of a lot of scriptures and I'll tell you what you say. So if you got a pen and Pen, pencil, or paper, you might want to jot these scriptures down. <clears throat> it might be useful to you uh, in, in the future. Who knows? Maybe you know more about it than I do. But uh, that wouldn't be too much. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this is something that's kind of, you know, it's everywhere nowadays. Um, it's really pushed upon on society. Um, you can't turn on a TV show without having one character, at least, usually that's, you know, gay, right? Everybody ever notice that? Yes. Even in some of the commercials. commercials. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, as, I don't know, as Christians, we need to, we need to know about what God's Word says about it. So, we think it's a sin, right? Right? Everybody agree? Yeah. How do we know? How do we know? The Bible says so. Huh? The Bible says so. Plus, <laughs> I didn't get into it. <laughs> You're right. God's word says so. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we look at these people and we think, sometimes you look at a person, do you not ever do, are you not guilty of this? That person looks like he's gay. <laughs> or her. I mean, let's, you, you really think that. Um, is, that ex is that an excuse to be that way? No. Well, did God make them to look like that? Yeah, he made us, me, to look like me. Ron looked like him. Right. Uh, you say I look gay? <laughs> well, sounds like it. We kind of laugh about it, but it's a serious thing. And I bet you, I bet you, everybody here is probably knows of a, at least one family that has somebody that claims to be. Why they are? Uh, now I kind of broke broke this down into th three or four different sections here. The reason they are, the warnings they are, and the cure for it. Uh, <clears throat> let's get started in Genesis. Right off the bat, what did God do? He made what? It says he made male and female. Yes. What was the reason to make a man and a woman? To help her. Well, well yeah, but to there's woman. another reason. He wanted, to work. <laughs> he, wanted to re he wanted to populate the earth, didn't he? Yeah. With a man and a woman. And it makes sense that two men can't, two women can't. It takes a man and a woman. Um, These situations like this are caused by what? The fall of man into a sinful state. Like we just studied about. I think Rich taught that lesson about Adam and Eve, right, Rich? Mm -hmm. The fall of man. That brought on all sin, actually, didn't it? It brought on our sin, their sin, everybody else's. So that's why we have this situation. That's why we have every sinful situation. You know, I was reading about, <clears throat> there, there's different things here, like we talk about 
some, you know, they got transgenders, you know, that's when people have surgery and they, they change from man to woman or woman to man, supposedly. Yeah. Then you have the gay people. And then you have what you call, has anybody ever heard of intersex, uh, intersex person? Yes, yeah, I Inter. Inter. See, anybody know what that is? No. I have a relative who is. Okay. That's a person that's born with maybe a female with man, a man's oh. partly organs or vice versa. Oh, I heard about that, but I mean, I've heard yeah. somebody they used to call it something. That's, the, that's something, you know, we can't help. But we might think, well, why did God make that? Well, there's a lot of things we could say. Why did God, why did God make a person? Was it Marsh, Marshall telling about the other day, a person that was born, no arms and no legs? Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did God do that? Why was a God person being a little born intersexual like that? Why does people die? Why do people have cancer? Because of one thing. Well, I just mentioned it. Sin. Sin entered into the world. So, God created man, male and female. <clears throat> Jeremiah says in verse 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and dis desperately wicked. Ourselves can deceive ourselves into thinking we're something that we're not. Aren't you? You ever think you're something you're not? Sometimes I think I'm a young guy, I'm not. <laughs> and let me ask you this. <clears throat> you ever had a dream, you dream you was young? And you drove up, you're so disappointed. <laughs> but people listen to their own heart sometimes, their own selves, and they get into trouble. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's the reason. Sin is the reason. And the warnings are, well, God had a lot to say about it. Yeah, we're going to go over a few. Genesis 1.27, we already read that, that God created them male and female to have children to populate the earth. Uh, <clears throat> Jesus reiterated that and reaffirmed that in Matthew 19.4 and 5. Let me read that to you. Matthew what? Matthew 19, 4 and 5. And he answered and said to them, they was asking, questioning Jesus about, uh, actually about uh, uh, divorce. But Jesus said, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. We have so many... How many people have seen a, on a, a game show, you know, and they've talked to them, introduce them. I want to say hi, a man say, I want to say hi to my husband yeah. in the audience. I seen a guy the other day, they, the guy said, I have, you know, his husband, and we have three, three adopted boys. Shame on that person for, that adopted them children out to two men. Shame on them. And by the way, did you know that the Supreme Court overruled God? Yeah. Yeah. God said man, male and female. Well, our Supreme Court said it can be man, man, and woman, or woman. So they think they know more than God. They might be the Supreme Court, but they're not the Supreme Judge. And I believe the people that voted for that is going to stand in before him and give an account for that one day. By the way, if you got a comment or something, feel free. Where, where were you at in Jeremiah? 17.9. Uh, Thank you. <clears throat> So I read that to you in Matthew. Leviticus 18.22 says, Thou shalt not lie with a man as with a woman. Does that tell you anything? It's pretty plain, isn't it? And God reiterates that again in uh, Leviticus um, I believe it's 20 and 13. I got it wrote down here wrong, but I think it's 20 and 13, says this. Now listen closely to what he says here. This is a serious situation with God. 
if any if a man also lie with if a man also lie with mankind in other words man with a man as lieth with a woman both of them have committed an abomination they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them now we don't kill people for sinning anymore under grace but that doesn't change how God feels about it. It says it's an abomination. There's few things in the Bible that says it's an abomination to God. Can anybody give me a definition of abomination? Sin. Actually, it Bad means... Sin. <laughs> Bad. It means a... Uh, well, I had it wrote down here somewhere. It means disgust or hatred. That's how God feels about that. After all, didn't God make man in His own image? His image is supposed to be pure, right? From the get get go, really. So, <clears throat> very few times in the Bible does it say anything about being an abomination to God. This is one of those few things. Deuteronomy. 22 and 25 says that a woman is not to wear a man's clothes or a man wear a woman's clothes. Now a lot of people kind of go overboard on this thing and say, well, a woman's got pants on. Well, if it's a woman's pants, it's okay. <laughs> but the idea that God had here was cross-dressing. We see that all over today. You know, TV shows about it all the time. You know, uh, I think our, uh, one of our fine political leaders wanted to have cross-dressers come and entertain our kindergartners in school. Yes, yeah. that's true. Right? Attorney, uh, Attorney General, was it? I think. Uh -huh. Who happens to be gay, I think. Uh -huh. um, and said... Uh, and it went ahead to say that that's an abomination to God. Just, just to well, cross-dressing, in other words, despicable in God's eyes. <clears throat> Back any comments yet? No? no? Okay. Well, not people, votes in people. I'm sorry? What about Christians who vote in people? What about that? Shame on them. Biden wouldn't even be president if it wasn't for <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's, That's a shame on them. Amen. You can't blame that one on me. <laughs> no, I ain't blaming them. I'm just saying. Yeah. The stats is what it is. <clears throat> we all know about the uh, what happened in Genesis 19. Yes, sure. Sodom and Gomorrah. We see a whole a whole city full of uh, these kind of people. That was, they were so bad off that they wanted to. Have sex with angels. Mm -hmm. With what? Yes. yes. Pardon me? With what? With the angels. With the angels? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Have you ever read that? Chapter yeah. 19th chapter, 19th chapter of oh, Genesis. Genesis. Read it if you haven't. God destroyed that city. And since, you know, they give uh, a definition to gay people in the Bible, which is called what? Sodomites. When you see the word sodomite, it's talking about uh, a homosexual. <clears throat> First, Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians 6.9 says that an effeminate or abusers of themselves shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Does anybody want to make a stab at what effeminate means? He's a man acting like a woman. Huh? A man acting like a woman. Yeah, a man that's got uh, uh, woman's ways or sissy, that's the way I'd put it. He even says that they will inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes we look at these people and they say, well, can, can they, is there any hope for them? Can they be helped? There's plenty and a lot of people that has been like this that are now Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at, look, you can look online and find plenty of testimonies of people that has been 
uh, gay and turn their life around to the Lord. A lot of them even married, have children. Good. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think people say, well, there's always been a lot of them. You know, they just they just come out of the closet. No, I think there's there's more and more. Uh, yeah, because they advertise it. Right. Yeah. You know what? One thing I think people, some people are big for jumping on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Whatever's popular they want to be. That's right. Or well, do they want to try something? I think she was very insecure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you know, this girl kind of intimidated her to be that way. I really mm -hmm. do. Because I've known her since she was a baby. Well, you know, there's a lot of psychological reasons. I guess right. one people are like that, and I'm not no psychologist. No, I ain't much of anything, but all I can do is read you what God said about it. Right, yeah. And we have to take His word for it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. No matter why, what, why the reason they are like that. Yeah. You know. It might be something from the childhood, I don't know, but sin caused that. If they was abused by somebody, then that's, that's sin. That's what sin caused. Anybody else got a comment? My best friend was, was gay, and when she was dying, I went up and, and uh, asked her if she, you know, if, if God had come to her, and she said no. She knew my feelings, and I knew her feelings, but she never, she never ever talked like they do nowadays, trying to encourage people to be gay. Mm. She, you never knew that she was gay. I mean, it took my husband to tell me that she. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I just didn't realize that she never acted that way, you know. Mm. But when she was dying, I told her God would come to her, and I just prayed that she would go that way, and I pray that one day I get to heaven, she's there, you know. So you have to love them. Because you know, you can see what's ahead of them if they don't. Let me, let me ask you this. Can a gay person be a Christian? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. No. If, they say, if they turn their lives around. Yeah. If you go by what if you go by what if you go by what I just read, yeah. it says an effeminate or an abuser of themselves of mankind cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that's what it's talking about. They can be a Christian if they change their ways. If they change, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. And, and, and we're going to get into that. <laughs> now, I agree with you, Silas. I surely do. So, we talked about the, 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 the reason, the warnings, and now we're going to talk about the cure. We all know the cure, don't we? Because we've all been sinners. Right. We might not have been in that situation, but we was all hell bound one time, wasn't we? Yeah. Yeah. I know I was. I guess the rest of you was. <laughs> Before accepting Jesus as your Savior. And Jesus, and who all did Jesus die for? Everybody. Everybody that'll accept Him. Well, He died for everybody, whether they accept Him or not, didn't He? Right? So, Jesus died for everybody. In Romans 10, 13, everybody probably knows this scripture. He said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that includes any uh, uh, transgender or, or uh, homosexual or whatever. Uh, a drunken, alcoholic, uh, even a person ain't never been none of these things. Uh, you know, I got a good friend of mine before I got saved. He said, uh, you know, you wasn't it. So he said, "Well, I didn't say this about myself, but he did." He said, "You were so good that uh, I I thought you was a Christian already." Well, I might have lacked it good, but I was still a sinner. You know, I didn't do a lot of things that people expect sinners to do. Well, that's what he's talking about. Still, I'm still lost, and I know it. Uh, the the I had I was fortunate enough to have a mama that took me to church and got me under conviction. You know, and then, then I got saved. <clears throat> so, 
So, but a person must be willing to change, don't they? That's right. They got to be willing to. Because in Matthew 16, 24, Jesus says, if any man come after me, let him, what? Deny himself. You got to deny those feelings. You know, uh, those feelings that those people have. I'm sure that some of them is probably so. But don't we as Christians have feelings to temptations to sin and other things? If a, if, a, if a man looks after a woman, you know, to lust after her, I mean, that's a temptation. He don't have to give in to it. I don't know what the, the women, same thing. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, now they set plain that alcoholic is predisposition, how you might say that, to be a drunk or an alcoholic. I don't know if that's so or not. They've never convinced me, but that's what they say. But people don't usually advocate for them to go ahead and be an alcoholic, do they? Because it's, that's what they say. So why would you do that? If they were, if they were saying they was predisposition to be gay, but they do. Matter of fact, they, they're encouraging in our schools now people to you know figure out what kind of are you a man or are you a woman, a boy or girl. They encourage people to think that over. That's a shame. Okay, we'll get on with the cure here. Romans twelve two says. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A person's got to make a change. I don't care what kind of sinner we was, we got to make a change. When we ask Jesus to save us, we better make a change in our lives, right? I mean, being saved is not just saying a prayer, right? So many people teach that. Say this prayer with me and you'll be saved. Yeah, it's a trans- transformation. Transformation of our, ourselves, of our minds. Are we still tempted to do the same things we did when we was not saved? There's no guarantee you ain't going to be, is it? These people might be tempted to do the same thing. Well, and now, and now, pardon me. That's what sanctification is for. Yeah, yeah. An alcoholic might be tempted to take a drink, wouldn't he? Yeah, but, or whatever you might do. Whatever you might have been. I mean, I think I think this is like a. It's easy. It's sometimes I feel like it's easy to call out these things. Um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's easy to call out these things. But I think we all have something in our lives that we might struggle with. You know, it's like, I mean, you know, we could we could get on some touchy subjects like gossiping or <laughs> not liking people. Yeah. Or, right. You know, there's so many different things. Go ahead, preach it, girl. <laughs> what we're saying about, you know, what we should be as, as Christian people, it, it goes deep. I mean, I fight being angry sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, I get broke rage and things like that. And I have to keep in mind, like, oh yeah, like you can't just, you know, freak out all the time. So, I mean, it's just, sometimes I think about how easy it is for people to look at those kinds of things. And I, I guess I just think some of the things you're saying make me think of other things that we struggle with too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Anybody else? You don't have to be an alcoholic to want to take a drink. I mean, you know what I mean? Anybody could have that problem. They don't have to be an alcoholic or past alcoholic to say, hey, I might want to have one of those drinks. Yeah. Jan? You know, Dave, how do these uh, people see them relationship with God, the ones that aren't gay or lesbians or whatever? What is, I mean, what is their relationship? How do they, how do they see themselves? The ones that are gay? Well, I think sometimes... How do they justify? I mean, what do they... How do they justify? I think, I think their eyes are blinded sometimes. You know, or they've been given the wrong information. Uh, I also hear sometimes, um, I've seen this a lot, where people think that uh, some Christians are just being traditional or that Jesus would be okay with that now. And I think sometimes they take, so I, I think, Jan, some, I've heard of this, and I mean, you know, I don't mean to belabor the point or talk too much, but you have some people who, Christians, who are way, way legalistic, right? Like they, you gotta follow everything to go to heaven, and then you have right. some people who are Christians who are way, way, way 
you know, you're into grace. And I think you, you kind of have this middle section of people who, you know, are looking to the Bible. But I think some people can read into some things in the New Testament about, like, Jesus was loving and kind and he would just accept mm -hmm. everybody. And that's, so I, I think sometimes they justify that God would just be okay, that Jesus is okay with that because he's so, does that make sense? So I, that's what I see a lot, like when I see those viewpoints online or hear people talking about that or, or some of the people that I know who are Christians who believe that, you know, that's an okay lifestyle, that's kind of what I hear from them. So that he justifies it, even though the sin. Some people, some, some people want to think that God changes with the times. And, and, of course, we don't. He doesn't. And there's different churches that believe differently, too. And they they say they're Christians, but their church believes in this and their church believes in that. I know my daughter said she can't go to our church because we're too strict. And I go, well, what do you mean too strict? Nobody follows you around. What are you talking about? <laughs> they don't. No. Okay. they got churches that believe in eating Mary and Right now, yeah. Yeah, in Ann Arbor. Janice oh, had something to say. Too. Go ahead. Yeah, the church that we came from, uh, that's one reason we left, is is not because it was it's just the values that they're going at. And I you know, I brought up different things in the Bible and uh, I asked the pastor, I said, Are you gonna baptize uh, someone that's gay? And he said, Well, were you perfect when and when you got baptized, they said, no, but I was willing to change, mm -hmm. you know. And we were, we were being taught to accept anything and everything. And that's one reason. I'm not saying I'm right or they're wrong. I'm just saying it wasn't for me. And that's exactly what I told the pastor, you know, because they had us down in Gypsy at the train station, and there was transsexuals down there that were dressed like women. And, mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it was, and the pastor said, did you go up and talk to him? I said, I couldn't. I mean, it was just too hilarious. I mean, this big old guy was dressed up like a woman. And, you know, so they wanted us to accept all of this. And I, that's one reason that all of us left. You know? the, the, the Bible says that in the last days, it says in the last days, people will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, what he's saying is, they're going to go out and they're going to find the person that tells them what they want to hear. Yeah. So you can find a preacher in it to tell you anything that you want to hear. Can't you say, am I not right? Somewhere or another, you can find a church that'll, that'll go along with whatever you want to hear. Whatever you want to hear. Well, I got a question. Uh, everybody here that has, hasn't got sin in their life, stand up. Everybody. So if you're going to make it about sin, we all going to hell. Right. But I ain't saying that. You're, just, yeah. you're making it about sin. Mm -hmm. It's about being saved. If you're saved mm -hmm. or you're not. Mm -hmm. There's only you only two people in the world. Saved people or lost people. Right. Yeah, there ain't no in between. People does this, and they lie to be real weak. I don't, we don't know their hearts. Right. But if, right. they, if, if they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus, who died on the cross for all sins, mm -hmm. I mean, it says you're saved. Yeah, I mean, don't tell nobody just fuck all the like a girl or boy that you ain't saved. Now they might not be. Well, he says we, say there's certain things in the Bible you got to repent of, and it's all sin. Well, yeah, you right. repent of all he, sin. He's talking about law and grace too. <laughs> and he done said if you uh, abuse yourself with mankind, you ain't going to heaven. Yeah, that's that's right. that's law too. No, no, Jesus said that. Yeah, or Paul said that. Yeah. Jesus didn't always. Uh, uh, minister to Gentiles. Just a couple of exceptions. I ain't saying, you know, we can get on a whole bunch of trip down here mm -hmm. doing this stuff. But I mean, you, you got to go by what, the, but basically what Apostle Paul, he's our apostle. Apostle of the Gentiles. He was apostle to everybody. Well, he wrote, well, to, he wrote to, the Jew, to the Gentiles. He wrote to the Jews and the Gentiles. But here's the thing. If you really truly believe that Jesus died, if you believe that, I think that at some point your heart is going to want to change to right. follow. Well, that's afterwards. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Afterwards. I mean, that that's, should that's be God's problem. That should be what we see following through. So I think it's hard to, you know, I don't know. We'll know by our fruits, but 
know it gets. I know. All right, let's let's move let's move on here. I got a few more points here if y'all don't mind. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, no, I'm telling you. Second <laughs> Corinthians five seventeen. I don't think I covered that point. It's been so long since I read one, but. <laughs> It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. That old lifestyle is going away. You're a new creature in Christ. It says, your body, uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, you are not your own. Or Paul said that. You are not your own. So you can't do anything, just anything with your body you want to do. He said, because you're not your own. Your body's not yours. It belongs to Jesus. He said, your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you can't do everything you want to with it. So, there we have what I would call the cure for it and to show that, that people can change and need to change. Now, though, my last uh, question is, and maybe we've done covered part of this. How should we as Christians treat these people? With love. Right. We should want to win them as much as we want to win anybody else. We're supposed to love them and not judge them, right? Right. Okay. We're supposed to love them. We're supposed to love them. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting into that discussion tonight again. <laughs> when you say that we shouldn't abuse our bodies, I mean, there's other ways that even Christians may abuse their bodies. That's true. Right? If you're a diabetic and you eat sweets constantly yeah. knowing yeah. that that's bad for you, that's abusive to your body. Mm -hmm. Right. So can those, are those people still Christians? Sure. Oh. Well, there's, 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 there's different degrees of sin. That might be displeasing to the Lord, but it might not be a sin in my eyes and the way I look at it. So, I, I mean, I guess I've always believed that sin is sin. It doesn't, but, like, a couple living together before marriage is sin as well as a couple that's a man and a man living together, a woman and a woman. Right. The truth. The Bible, the Bible talks about either one of them being a sin. But I think sometimes as Christians, we look and see things that that's a worse sin than that sin. Well, I think there is one sin could be worse than another sin. Because I just read there where, you know, about what God thought about that. But the other abomination. Yeah. Which you have are just causing mischief with each other. That, that's an abomination too. I think all sin is bad in God's eyes no matter what it is. So, what else? Do, how, anybody got another comment on how we should treat these people? With love. With love. Okay. With love. We should. Uh, how do we? How do we treat them with love? We tell them about their sin. That's the best way you could love somebody, right? The Bible says, "Hate the sin, love the sinner." Yeah, there you go. That's it. It's if we don't Hate tell if we don't tell people they're sinning. Hate the sin. We're we're wrong about that. I guess. I know. Probably we probably fall short of that a lot. I mean, as a whole. I'm sure we do. You know, anybody else any comments on this? Sometimes too that we as Christians should should give the. I so I say this with a lot of love, but I think there are some people who come in like they they're not following the, the lead of the Holy Spirit to talk to somebody. They're saying it because they're just saying it outright, right? Mm -hmm. like, I think that 
I think that we can pray for them. We can love them for sure, but we can pray for people. And, and I mean, you know, this is, I don't mean this bad. I understand what you're saying, but like, they're not these people. They're just people like the rest of us, right? So I think sometimes we can pray for them and we can ask the Holy Spirit to guide us on when and how, because it is a delicate subject. It's, yeah. a, it's a hard thing. And I imagine that just as much as I struggle with being angry sometimes or, you know, my sins that I won't divulge right now, but, you know, I imagine it's just as hard for them to, to fight that off too. And so I think that we can also rely on the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, to know how to be and to know what the method is for that. Instead of, I see that sometimes where we're like, we're going to tell them, you know, and that's like, but sometimes I think the Holy Spirit can open up relationships and build something there before we just go into. Because if you're telling them, they're, yeah. you're judging them. That's right. But if you're if you're just trying to be their friend and show them, you know, and tell them. They, obviously, they don't think they're sinning. No. Right. I think, not, that, right. I think that the devil has worked for many, many, many years. Oh yeah. To keep this all quiet and keep it under wraps so that in the, in the future, and now is the future, mm -hmm. it's crammed down our throats, right. it's, it's acceptable, it's, it's okay, it's all right, it's, it's no big deal, mm -hmm. he'll get over it. And, and now, Christians are conditioned to just sit back and say, okay, well, I don't want to step if, on anybody's feelings. If, you know, uh, you know if, if something comes to our church and we know it, I mean, we should treat them just like we do anybody else that comes That's in right. our church. That's right. Make them feel at home. Make them feel welcome. Right. But we're not going to change the truth, teaching the truth, because they're you know they're here. No, we don't change what we believe. No, no well, we don't change what we we tell we tell every sinner they need to be exactly. saved. Exactly. But we don't want to treat anybody different. Right. We don't want to run anybody off. We don't want to turn anybody away from church. Right, right. We don't want to welcome yeah. everybody. Just give them the gospel, man. You don't worry about their sins. Just tell them the gospel. They get saved. God fix that. So but, if, if, you, if you go up to one, somebody you want to witness them worrying about telling them and hurting their feelings, right. I mean, they I mean, should. <laughs> but just give them the good news. Yeah. Give them the gospel. Right. Well, I think they do, but that's on their head. Yeah. And then, right. then it won't be on my head because I told you the gospel. Mm -hmm. right. and after they get saved, God will fix the sin part. Right. Anyone else? I just think my, me and that friend of mine, we were friends for over 20 years. And, you know, I never brought it up to her that she would, you know, that she shouldn't be living the way she lived. But I just. I just befriended her, and she she respected my beliefs, and and you know, mm -hmm. I didn't. She knew I didn't agree with what she was doing, but I didn't bring it up to her because I think if you bring it up to a person, that's going to push them away more than anything. Is there other sins though that we I mean, might bring up to people sin. that say, say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that, I, or, I or is it just that? <laughs> It's hard. I know it's hard to yeah. hard to confront people I mean, about I their tried sins. To it is. Get her to go to the Lord, you know, when she was dying, and I pray that she did. But you know, I just don't think that we can just throw it up at them and, and tell them that they're, you know, they're gay. In the same way, with us staying at the church that we were at, they were accepting that, and I said, you know, I'm I'm not accepting it, but. Mm -hmm. They were, and, and so for us to stay there, we would have had to have accepted it as well. And so that's why we choose to leave. And I love all the people that are there, and and you know I pray that their church does well if that's what they you know think's going to work. But we went and visited a lot of churches in Ann Arbor and Gypsy that were you know. being ran this way. And, let me just say this one more thing, and you might not agree with me. What if we didn't confront that person and we see him on judgment day and they said, You didn't tell me I was living that kind well, of life. Let them know. I don't you know. I have I have this I have this 
problem with where I live. Uh, my, some of my friends, when I would walk, I would be walking with them, and they would start cussing, and they would, you know, they'd be talking about something, and they just start cussing. I'm like, look, that's I can't have that. I can't have that around me. You, that's wrong, and I can't have it around me because next thing you know, it might come out of my mouth. I can't have it around me. You know, I just I flat out tell them, you want to walk with me, fine, but you can't be cussing every five minutes. Joe, we want to dismiss us? Sure. <laughs> Father, God, we thank you for your love to us, God. And may we, you know, follow your example and um, love other people no matter what. God, you loved us no matter what. And God, may we do the same. And, um, and God, may they see you in us. And, and uh, may they know that they are loved by you because we love them, Lord. And, and uh, God, we just ask that you help us and guide us and, and just understand and respect each and every person that you created. And God, we, we just ask that you bless us and help us to be strong for you and live for you and have our life shine for you, God. And um, We love you and we thank you and appreciate your word and we appreciate everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.